It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. I will roll right now into our uh, post-race press conference here at Phoenix International Raceway. We're pleased to be joined by our race runner-up. That is Kurt Busch. He drives the number two Miller Lite Dodge. Kurt, uh, you had a strong performance out there uh, this afternoon and trying to chase down that 48, but you sure gave it a good run. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we, we felt like we had a great race today. We had a great race car underneath us. Uh, just um, had, a, had a great effort all around uh, with pit stops, with changes during the race. Uh, just uh, nice and steady progress throughout the day. And we're, we thought we were on our game. We thought uh, we had the most of the group covered, but we just got beat. And we got beat by something special. And I'd like to talk about Jimmy. And I mean, I'm supposed to do the NASCAR thing and talk about my team and my sponsors. But he's doing something pretty special. And there was a restart with 94 laps or something to go when uh, he was second behind Jamie McMurray. Uh, I was third. And the way that uh, he, he went high, went low, and he was in the lead before you could snap your fingers, uh, it was unbelievable to watch that type of uh, display. And it's something pretty special to be able to race against him right now, that team, Chad Knauss, uh, Mr. Hendrick, and Jimmy Johnson. They're just that combination is potent. Uh, it's the same for all of Hendrick, but it's just that extra 10% that him and Chad Knauss have. Uh, it's just tough to beat. And so it's, it's really a, a privilege to finish second to him today, but I, I thought we had a great run for our Penske Dodge. Uh, Miller Lite is, is going to be ecstatic with that. We, we feel like we're building some momentum with uh, our runs recently. And uh, just to be in contention for it, just to be up front, uh, it's, it, it's just uh, – it's just something special, though, to watch Jimmy right now. Thank you, Kurt. We're also joined by our third-place finisher in today's race, and that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is uh, Jamie McMurray. He drives the number 26 Irwin Industrial Tools Ford. Jamie had a great weekend. You qualif uh, qualified uh, uh, up high. You, you mentioned about your engagement earlier in the week, and you finished third in the race. Congratulations. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a fun week. Uh, and, you know, when the race started, I really thought that, we might have the car to beat. Um, I got by Jimmy on the outside and was able to somewhat check out. And then when I got back in traffic, I think we restarted like fourth or fifth. You know, you get so tight when you get behind guys. And um, I thought if they can ever get me back out front, I, uh, I'll be able to, to drive away from those guys. But our car got tighter as the, as the day went on. And um, the run right before um, I was in the lead with, with Jimmy behind me um, on one of those last restarts, my car was as good as it had been. And then it just went really tight all of a sudden. So... He, uh, they just did a better job of adjusting on their car and uh, and getting it getting it better as the race went on. But still, it was a really solid weekend for our team. I will take questions now for either Kurt or Jamie. We'll start here with Don. Lee, did you have one? Yes, sir. Okay, Don, and then Bruce, and then Tom. Kurt, the the fact that Jimmy is racing for a championship did that change the way that you? tried to approach him in those last couple restarts i mean you were, were you were you in a position where i really can't put a bumper on him i, I have to really race him hard but race him clean what i uh, had as a game plan was to at least get close enough to him to make him think big picture and to force him into actually uh making it cross his mind i just couldn't get that close um, of course i want to race a guy clean for when he's running for the championship, I'd want him to do the same for me. And it's just uh, it's just really a, a matter of trying to get to his bumper, but I couldn't quite get there. I couldn't quite put enough pressure on him. I knew um, I had all the race fans up on their seats. I was looking to put on a good show. I was wanting to get there. I was wanting to get next to him. I was, want, I was wanting to win for our team, but I uh, just came up a bit short. We got beat by a, a really good team today. All right, we'll go with Bruce and then Tom Jensen. Go ahead, please. Kurt, kind of another spin on what I asked you on Friday. <clears throat> there was nothing easy when you won the title in 04. 
Are you surprised as a competitor how easy Jimmy and Chad are able to make this thing look this year? Yes and no. I mean, 04 was a battle to the end. Um, I, I wish every chase could be like that so that every driver gets to go through <laughs> the cut wrenching feel uh, that, that we had to go through. But as a quick timeline, um, 2006, these guys <coughs> peaked. They hit their game. That's when we had the old downforce car. They were tough to beat. 2007 was a transitional year. They were really strong with the new COT. They were still strong with the old car. And if you win during a transitional year, that's only going to bode well for the future. 2008, they're on their game. Uh, it's something special to watch. Tom, do you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, for either Kurt or Jamie, you guys both had a frustrating start to the season and both have been running much better in recent weeks. How much does this momentum give you a lift going into the off season, and is it something that you can carry forward as you get ready for 09? Well, I think that, uh, you know, for any any of the teams, if you run well at the end of the season, that team's going to run well when the when next season starts. And the, the way our, our schedule is laid out, a lot of the tracks that you run the last 10 races you have in the in the first bit, Fontana and, and uh, Bristol, uh, Richmond, a lot of those races you have towards the beginning of the season. And, I mean, I, I think that the, the tone of your season gets set in those first five races. Um, you know, if you look at the guys in the in the first five that were in the top ten of points, that's they still are. And um, to end this year strong is is super important because you're going to start next season hopefully where you've left off. Next question, please. Who's got it? Got one up front here, Jim. <laughs> David Bull, Charlotte Observer. For, for either one of you guys, when you when you watch a team get into the the groove like that, they get into this this whatever they're in, the Johnson's team. Do you think does it? Someone said make it look easier. Knowing how hard it is to win once, does it make you just kind of go, man? What, what, I mean, do you sort of marvel at what, what's going on, or do you just appreciate it? I'll just uh, quick jump in, and I'll let Jamie go. It, it's just. That restart, when, when he was behind you, 94 laps to go, I was running third. I'm like, all right, here, here's our chance to, to truke it up a little bit. Let's see if Jimmy struggles. He went high. He cut low. He was underneath Jamie and clear by the dog leg. And I just I watched something so special. I was like, that's why they're so dominant. That's something that I, I, I want to get with my car. I want to get that feel underneath in the Miller Light Dodge. But he, he cut, he bobbed, he weaved, and he was gone. Uh, that's, that's hard to beat.